In this video, we're going to do some mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problems. So there's some basic steps that you need to follow to do that. Um, and essentially, we've already done them in the previous video. But what you do is you need to write out a balanced equation um, if one's not already provided. And if one is provided, make sure it is balanced first, because that's always a tricky point there. Make a mole ratio between the chemicals you're in interested in working with. So whatever known value you have and whatever you're trying to find, make a ratio between those. And then use the ratio as a conversion factor to find whatever your unknown is supposed to be, just as we did in the previous video. So let's take a look at this example here. Determine the amount of ammonia produced when 0.25 moles of nitrogen gas react with excess hydrogen. So our hint is to write a balanced equation first. So that's my first step. I do, uh, we do nitrogen gas. So remember, this is um, diatomic, put our states reacts with excess hydrogen. Now the excess part just means it reacts with a lot of hydrogen. So we don't have to worry that we're running out of that and our reaction will stop early. Um, for now, usually we'll, we'll be given reactants that are reacting either perfectly with each other or there's excess of one. It just means like, don't worry about it too much. And then we're gonna get a NH3 produced. So as you remember from unit two, this is a uh, synthesis reaction. Um, and so this is our uh, equation. And we need to make sure it's balanced. And right now it doesn't look balanced. So I think I need to put a two here, a three here. And I think now it's balanced. So I'll try two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six hydrogens, six hydrogens, we're balanced now. Okay, so um, what I do next is I actually like to write everything that I'm given in the question underneath my, um, my equation, my reaction there. So I have, 0.25 moles of nitrogen gas reacting. So I'm going to put N is equal to 0.25 moles. Okay, that's my ratio. I'm sorry, that's the amount of moles reacting. And I want to find um, how much ammonia will be produced. So I'm going to put over here N is equal to question mark because that's what I want to find. I'm going to use my N2 to find my NH3. So Let's see how it can do that. Um, at first glance, you could probably already figure it out. You'd look at it and say, well, I have one N2 and two NH3s, so it looks like a one to two ratio times 2.5, done. So in your head, you can get that, and that's good. Now let's just practice on getting it on paper and showing how we can write that out and show the process, because it won't always be a simple ratio like that. So let's make a ratio between the interest, the um, items of interest. So N2 is what's given, we want to find NH3. So our ratio is going to be 1N2 for every 2NH3. You could also write it as for every 1N2, you have 2NH3. Or for every 2NH3, you have 1N2. So let's go ahead and do our calculation now. We have 0 0.25 moles of N2. That's what we actually have reacting. That's what we're given to us. That's what we're given. And we're going to multiply it by one of the conversion factors to get rid of N2 and keep NH3 because that's what we're looking for. So it looks like this one over here would be the, the one. So I'm going to do times 2 mole of NH3 divided by 1 mole of N2. So I'll cancel mole out here, cancel mole out there, mole of N2 out there, both of them out. And now I'm just doing 0 0.25 times 2 divided by 1, which is just 0 0.25 times 2, which would give me 0 0.50 moles of NH3. Now, I want to be clear, we need to follow our significant figure rules here. So if we look at the question here, in the question we're given, two significant figures. We want to make sure we follow the smallest number of sig figs. Coefficients don't count in there because they're exact numbers. So we just use the smallest number of sig figs given in the question. So in this case, two, and it seems to be rounded to that. But just to, to show us here, so this is rounded to two sig figs here. So two sig figs, and we can put our therefore statement. So therefore, um, 0 0.50 moles, of NH3 um, are produced. So that was a stoichiometry problem. 
using a mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry um, uh, pattern. Let's go ahead and try another example. Let's go to example four. Consider the reaction between magnesium metal and oxygen gas. So we have two MGs plus O2 gives you two MgOs. Luckily, we have a uh, balanced equation given to us, but I'm just going to rewrite it out over here so I can work with it. So two magnesiums like this um, plus one O2 gas. And I'm putting one just so I know that it's a it's coefficient of one there um, produces two MgOs solid. And uh, I'm going to write down some information. So um, I'm told that I have uh, five moles of magnesium. And I want to know how many moles of oxygen would react with that. So I'm going to write N is equal to five moles here. And then here N is equal to question mark. I don't know what that is yet. So I want to try to figure that out. Um, now looking at this, just, uh, just first glance, we have two magnesiums for every one oxygen. So it looks like we have half the amount of oxygen every time. So in your head, you might be able to say, okay, well, it's about half the amount. So I should have about 2.5 moles of oxygen. If you're thinking that, you're right. But let's show how we would figure that out using our ratio and conversion factors. So we can write a ratio out. We know that what, we're, what are we interested in? The magnesium compared to the oxygen because we're given magnesium and we want to find how many moles of oxygen there are. So I'm just going to make a mole ratio. I'm going to say there's two magnesiums for every one oxygen molecule. Or again, you could write it as two magnesiums for every 102 like this is a fraction. Or for every 102, there's two, there are two magnesiums. So now we can go ahead and um, perform a calculation. So we have five mole of magnesium. And we're going to multiply that by our ratio that will get rid of magnesium. So that would be the this one because the magnesium is at the bottom there. So multiplied by one mole of O2 over two mole of magnesium. We can cross out mole of magnesium. And so what we're, and we're left a mole of O2. And what we're doing is we're doing five times one divided by two, which is gonna be 2.5 mole of O2. But we need to go take a look at the sig figs. In this question, we only have one significant figure. It's the smallest number there. So we need to round this to the correct number of sig figs. So that's going to be approximately two moles of O2. And the reason I said two is because remember when you have five here, exactly five, um, if it's even, you keep it even, two moles of O2. So therefore, um, two moles of O2 um, are required to react with five moles of Mg. Now we're using significant figures here. Um, in reality, in reality, um, for this question, it would actually probably better to say exactly 2.5 moles because this wasn't really a measured amount. Um, so because this wasn't a measured amount, they were just saying, you know, if you have five moles, how much should theoretically react? We can actually keep it at 2.5 because um, that would be the better recipe, 2.5 moles of O2. We really use significant figures if it's a measured value. So um, in reality, if we're following this recipe and I was asking you how much would be required to react, it is better to say 2.5 moles of O2 would react with five moles of magnesium. Otherwise, we're really underestimating and we won't have a full reaction happening. So yes, significant figures are important, especially when you're doing a measured value. Um, and actually, we would continue probably using um, significant figures in a question like this, but I do want you to get that in reality, 2.5 moles of O2 would actually be required to react with five moles. Two moles is, is too little. So for a question like this, it's a bit tough to judge, but this is probably an exact um, number here. 
So if it's an exact number, we can essentially um, keep it at 2.5 moles. Um, and I would be more precise with you to tell you, you know, keep it as, as an exact number. And if you're not certain, of course, you could ask. Uh, let's go ahead and do part B. How many moles of magnesium oxide can be produced from three moles of oxygen gas? So here we're going to assume, um, so here we have three moles of oxygen gas, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write out our balanced equation. So we're going to have two um, mg solid plus one O2 gas produces two MgO solid. And uh, we're going to write down our information. So we have three moles of oxygen gas and want to figure out how much MgO can be produced. So um, let's go ahead and try that out here. So we have, uh, we want to, we want to figure out what our ratio is. Now you can look at it very carefully and say, well, it's a one to two ratio. So I'm pretty sure there'll be six moles of um, <clears throat> oxygen is required to, uh, sorry, six moles of MgO produced. So that's most likely what you were saying in your head. But just to show you how that would work, you would make a ratio first. So you have a 102 for every two MgO uh, ratio. And um, you could write that out as also 102 for every two MgO. Or you could say for every two MgOs, you have one O2. And so your step three now is to take your known moles, so your three mole of O2, and multiply it by your conversion factor that gets rid of O2. So multiply it by, um, it looks like this one over here, 2MgO for every one O2. And I should say mole of MgO because we're dealing with moles, not molecules in this case. So two mole of MgO times uh, over one mole of O2. We can cross out moles of O2. And we're basically doing three times two divided by one, which is just three times two. So that's gonna be six moles of MgO. And our sig figs are uh, met in this case, our sig figs are met. Um, so because our sig figs are met, um, we have uh, one sig fig there, we're good with that. So one significant figure. Um, and we can just put our therefore statement. So therefore six moles of MgO would be produced. So what we did is we did a balanced equation. We wrote down our information underneath the balanced equation there. We made our ratio and then we used our ratio conversion factor to figure out how many moles would be produced. Um, and it's important to follow sig figs. In questions like this is a bit tricky though, because I mean, we're not, we didn't really measure these values out though. Um, we're just asking you if we had this much, um, how much would react with this or how much would be produced, which is why technically it would be okay to leave it like this without rounding the proper sig figs because we're just trying to follow the ratio. But when we actually do a lab where we measure things out um, and we're not being theoretical, um, there we have to follow our significant figures and carry them through in our calculations. So I just want to be clear on that part there. Um, in the next video, we're going to take a look at uh, the gravimetric stoichiometry, which is essentially trying to find um, the mass of something, uh, the mass of your product produced from a certain amount of, uh, of reactant or what mass of reactant needs to react with another mass of reactant. And so we'll see how all that works out as well. So we finished the stoichiometry problems. Um, which is the first half of the lesson for mole-mole stoichiometry. And then we're going to move on to uh, mass-mole stoichiometry in the next video.